So in this video, we'll talk about why uncertainties are important. Uh, you may have an intuitive sense of why this is the case, of course, from previous labs that you've taken, um, but let's be explicit about it. Um, so why do uncertainties matter? Let's look at it in the case of an example. So let's imagine you're trying to measure the density of a, um, and I wonder why this is so large here. So let's go. Okay, so let's measure the density of a metal, which is, you know, it could be either gold or it could be something else. Um, and if it's something else, it's, it's maybe an alloy and someone is trying to defraud you by trying to sell it as gold. So measurement one, in the first measurement, um, we measure, or one of your scientists measures the density as 15 grams per centimeter cubed. And the scientist also says that uh, uh, this value of rho um, of the density falls in the interval 13.5 um, and 16.5 grams per centimeter cubed. So that's the first measurement. Second measurement, another one of your scientists comes back and says, well, I've measured that rho is 13.9 grams per centimeter cubed. And my um, assessment of the uncertainty on that is that rho is um, in the interval from 13.7 to 14.1 grams per centimeter cubed. Okay, let's first look at uh, at these two values and let's uh, try to imagine what we might be doing here. Um, let's say we have uh, um, the values of rho along this axis and there's, you know, we've got uh, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, right? Um, the, the density of gold, let's say, is here. Um, and the density of the alloy that you suspect might have been used is here. So let's look at the two measurements first by central value only. So measurement one indicates that the, the density is right here. Measurement two indicates that the density is right here. Oh, I was already automatically drawing an error bar, which I didn't want to do just yet. Um, so what you might conclude from these two measurements, if you just look at the, um, at, the, at the values only, is that one of them agrees more with gold, the other one agrees more with the alloy, so maybe the scientists disagree, um, and uh, uh, you need to ask a third scientist and do science by, by majority, which is of course not what we want to do. Okay, let's now look at, uh, at the error bars though. Um, so the error bar here in the case of the second measurement is from 13.7 uh, to 14.1. So that's about this interval here. In the case of the first measurement, it's from 13.5. I'm gonna have to move stuff around a little bit more here. Um, so that's from 13.5 all the way up to 16.5. So now, which measurement do we trust more? Well, if we look at it this way, um, it seems like we actually might trust the measurement of, uh, of scientist two more than the measurement of scientist one, because in, in some sense, um, scientist one can, uh, scientist one's uncertainty um, band on the, um, on the measurement agrees both with gold and with the alloy. So it could actually be, the true value could be either gold or could be the alloy. In the case of scientist two, measurement two, it only agrees with the alloy and agrees very well. And the fact that the central value here is exactly the same as the central value of, of, of the uh, alloy or of the, the, the true value or the expected value of the alloy is almost coincidental. Um, really what matters is that the uncertainties are so much smaller. So a more precise measurement is almost more important than having um, a measurement that agrees. And so of course here what happens is that um, we've been able to use this in 
um, hypothesis testing. So in this case, we had two hypotheses, hypothesis one and hypothesis two. Um, hypothesis one was that uh, the alloy is really made out of gold and measurement one cannot discard that hypothesis and cannot discard um, hypothesis two that uh, the metal is, me is an alloy. In the case of uh, measurement two, however, we can reject hypothesis one. So um, by the fact that, uh, um, and, and we'll just assume that, that we can reject the entire hypothesis one, um, uh, even though there's going to be have, have to be some qualification as to the, the level of confidence that we have in that statement as well. Um, but since the, the central, the value for gold the density of gold is outside of this uh, this uncertainty, the margin of error or the error bars. Um, this means that uh, we can reject that hypothesis. This does not mean that we confirm hypothesis H2, but we cannot reject that hypothesis. So the other thing it, it highlights is uh, is a couple of things. So this is, let me write this as hypothesis testing. Um, the other thing that uh, that this example highlights is that any measurement without uncertainties is really useless. Um, so measurements without uncertainties are useless. So keep that in mind. That's of course going to be important in this course. Um, Measurements with large uncertainties are not necessarily wrong. So this, this measurement from scientist one is still in agreement with, uh, with uh, the alloy. Um, so even if uh, measurement two could rule out hypothesis one that, that, uh, that the metal was gold, um, that doesn't mean that measurement one was wrong. Um, it just means it wasn't precise enough. Um, it had too large of an uncertainties. So measurements with large uncertainties are not, and I'll put necessarily in parentheses, so they're not necessarily wrong. I mean, they could be wrong. Um, there could be a reason why the, the, the error bar is so large. Maybe the experiment could have been, or the measurement could have been performed um, better, and thereby the, the uncertainty could have, been, could have been smaller. But by itself, this measurement with a large uncertainty is not wrong. It's just that's the measurement that has that uncertainty. And of course, all of this relies on um, the fact that these uncertainties have to be reliable. Um, so all of this requires that uncertainties and the stated uncertainties are reliable. So we need to know that the uncertainty value here is correct um, in addition to, of course, the central value that is associated with that uncertainty. Um, so both an overestimate or an underestimate of the um, uncertainty is, is going to be problematic in this analysis. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to go over in terms of uh, the use of uh, uncertainty. So it helps in hypothesis testing. Um, and uh, we, can, we can use this to, to decide between two different hypotheses to see whether something is in agreement with an anticipated value, with an expected value, with an accepted world average value, whether two different measurements are in agreement. Um, and so what uh, the hypothesis testing aspect of this does is it allows us to reject an hypo a, a specific hypothesis. It doesn't never confirm any theories, but it allows us to reject other theories.